Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Santa came a little early in Olympus land this year. Um, so I just took delivery. Uh, the FedEx person was kind enough to drop this off. It is something everybody knows about. It's not like you can produce a new product without everybody finding out well in advance of it. Um, but we're gonna go through this whole process anyways. So inside of here is the brand new OMD EM1X. Um, and you know what, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if I'm saying the name right. I haven't even heard officially. I think it's OMD EM1X. I'm pretty much 99% certain it's OMD EM1X. That's what I'm running with right now. That's how new all this is. So it's December 20th. Um, official press release, OPR, as we like to call it on the inside, is uh, January 24th. So I'm a little over a month out from even being able to acknowledge this camera's existence. And that is going to allow me to do things a little bit different this time than what I've done in the past. So in the past, it's basically like I get the camera, I do like an unboxing video, and then I might check in a little bit later and talk about the camera. But typically it's been unboxed, talk about what I know about it from my briefings with Olympus. Uh, this one's different. So this one, I got it far enough in advance to where this is going to be like a combo video, like rolled up into one. So we're going to have the unboxing that we're about ready to do here. And then I'm also just going to shoot with the camera over the next month and record some behind the scenes of me out shooting, talking about first impressions, how I like the camera, the feel, functions and features, because there's some new stuff in this camera that, <laughs> that don't exist uh, in any of the other Olympus products. And I think that there's some stuff in here that doesn't exist in any other camera as well. So it's pretty rad. Uh, let's, let's crack open this FedEx box really quick uh, and see what this looks like on the inside here. Cracker open. Whoa! So there we go. This is product packaging that's very familiar to uh, all the other OMD EM1 line. Um, it's that cool black packaging. OMD EM1X. Little post it note with my name on it so that uh, this is, I know this is mine. Um, I'm not going to open it right here. Let's take this up to where I shoot the Mirrorless Minutes podcast and where I've done a lot of my other videos and uh, get away from the, the stuff that's going on downstairs at my house right now. We'll open this up. We'll take a close-up look at it. And uh, yeah, let's get this. Re that's not even a review. We'll call this Jamie's Getting to Know the OMD EM1X video. How about that? Getting to Know this camera. We're going to start that process right now. All right, you guys. It's time to crack open this box and see what this beauty is all about um and i just kind of want to also talk a little bit about maybe like the the target market for this camera it's funny looking at some of the some of the conversations going on online and people worried about the size of the camera and you know i just want to kind of reiterate you know keep in mind that not every camera made is for every single person you know if you understand what i'm saying so the the em1 mark ii the EM1 Mark I, uh, that being a professional level camera contained in a smaller form factor, you know, like everybody kind of associates with Micro Four Thirds. And then this camera being a larger form factor fills a different role completely. You know, this is geared towards somebody who would have been seen probably on the sidelines with a 1DX or something shooting sports or wildlife. Um, so, just always keep that in mind you know it's just something that i personally felt like i wanted to say it's not anything that anybody has said i need to say or anything like that it's just my personal observation you know that's a different it's a different camera body for a different genre of shooting for a different uh customer base i guess you could say so wow I can, <laughs> I can honestly say I've never owned a camera like this. Holy smokes. Okay, so first impressions, um, hand fit. This fills my hand, and I don't have large hands, so I've got, I'm going to say, like an average size hand, and it fits like, well, like a gripped EM1 Mark II with a little bit, I personally, I think, you know, like a little bit of a better feel, like it just feels a little more like a better fit it's hard to explain 
the the thumb grip here in the back the the shape of the body and I know this will not show through probably well but man my thumb just falls like perfect into that spot with easy access to the rear dial um, pretty pumped on that and, and I'll tell you what I was really excited when I saw this in the um, the tech briefing that we had the uh, the shutter button being separate from a dial that just that's something that I kind of missed from my DSLR days uh, and yeah I kind of like that actually a lot portrait orientation very like like almost identical to the EM1 Mark II as far as how it feels in my hand um, yeah I like this this is gonna be fun this is gonna be a journey I'm gonna learn about this camera and how to best wield its abilities uh, over the course of the next month and I'm bringing you guys along for the ride with me uh, it should be fun oh, oh, oh okay that's cool uh, so <laughs> the journey begins uh, battery so everybody probably by now will have watched one or two videos and if you haven't watched any other videos you'll hear about it and see it here first so this camera takes the same batteries as your OMD EM1 Mark II um, and you access them here. There's a locking door and out slides the battery tray that you load your two batteries in. Make sure I'm doing everything right here. Nice. I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, the, the eye cup on this is definitely different than the uh the em1 mark ii or the em1 it feels like it's got a larger eye relief of course i don't have it turned on so i'm not really looking at anything but just seeing how it feels on my face how the fitment is this is cool it seems like the evf uh the glass in the back seems like it's a little bit deeper in so that's kind of a different a different feel i'm gonna put these back on i'm getting old folks um super cool uh this is something different too as well so you've got these two lights they're probably imperceptible on the video that i'm showing you guys but i'll do some close-ups of the camera here too um so these are charging lights that show you the batteries as they're charging you they're um so because you, you can charge this via USB C. now everybody's probably like oh you know it's about time you get something you can charge with usb that's great Definitely totally cool because you can use something, you know, like the charger from your MacBook uh, To charge this but what's also cool is there are certain um, Battery power banks, you know that you'd use for to charge your cell phone or whatever that are capable of charging this as well I believe it's called um, PD so USB C dash PD I think for power distribution uh, It allows for charging and I'll have more information on that So don't run out if you get one of these Anytime soon to just start randomly plugging in power banks. That's probably not a good idea. Uh, there'll be more information coming out on which accessories are compatible that you're not going to burn up your camera with. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, I've got smaller hands. Keep that in mind. Somebody with like larger hands than me might have a little bit easier reach for these buttons. I'm. It's a little bit of a stretch for me to reach the uh, the exposure compensation here. Um, or not exposure compensation yeah but uh the iso is easily reachable here um usb c of course just like we knew um what else here uh something new as well so moving your focus points around used to be done via the i call it a d-pad you know like your video gaming d-pad there's actually like this little thumbstick which is uh I know that they're, that they're found on other camera systems as well. So it's a really definitely a welcome addition to this camera. So you've got a thumb pad there. And then you've also got one when you're in portrait orientation holding the camera vertically as well. Easy access to the buttons that way. I'm going to put a battery in it and I'll turn this thing on. There's a lot of ground to cover. So this is basically the end of the first 20 minutes with this camera. The next time I turn on the camera, hopefully I have a little bit more information on on using this bad boy. There's a, a lot to pick up here. I've got a little quick guide uh, put together to kind of help me utilize some of the newer features in this. Uh, one of the features that I'm really excited to get set up here 
are the custom, you know, my menus. You know, you've got uh, five customizable menus with a total of seven items that can be stored in each one. So 35 customized or 35, we'll say, uh, functions that you want quick access to. So you can kind of set it up so that you're really just only having to sift through the things that you change most frequently and not having to deep dive into menus all the time for the things that you might want access to. So uh, that's going to be another part of this video as well. I'll get that set up, show you how to set it up because it's super easy to get uh, done and uh, just kind of walk through that process. But for now, I'm going to shut off the camera. I'm going to throw a couple of batteries in here and uh, get to rocking and rolling with this thing. So stay tuned. Hey, good morning, you guys. So it's New Year's Day, uh, bright and early, pre-sunrise, kind of dark out. And I uh, am headed out shooting with the new OMD EM1X. And I'm on the hunt for snowy owls today. I've got about a 200 mile drive to the location where they're at. And, uh, you know, like any wildlife shooting, there's never any guarantees. But I figured I'd take you along for the adventure and uh, see what we can find. Uh, I'm not going to just shoot the snowies today, though. I figure why, why waste an entire trip uh, on the potential of not getting anything. So I'm actually going to bring the 7 to 14 with me to do some landscapes potentially and I'm bringing the 12 to 100 because let me get my gear in here uh, because the 12 to 100 is kind of my all around my all around lens uh, I'm also bringing <laughs> my Olympus binoculars because you need something to spot when you're out driving in the countryside and for stability so I'm going to shoot a lot handheld today but in case I do feel like I need some, some support for doing panning shots, I'm actually using a Vanguard monopod, which I have a, a ball head attached to as well, so I can kind of get a little more, little more control over the ball head. I'm uh, meeting up with a fellow Olympus shooter, Brian Essler. Um, Brian is a contributor and I think like an assistant editor or editor at Photo Focus a very popular website and um, yeah man I'm pretty excited <clears throat> snowy owls are are definitely something cool and very beautiful creatures so let me turn this down here so that's the goal is to to head out and shoot some snowies <sighs> wish me luck because um, I wanted to take you guys out for a cruise trying to shoot the Polar Express train and yes this video is very choppy as I try to position gear around so I can actually drive um, so anyways yeah I wanted to take you guys out when I shot the Polar Express and we shot the Polar Express, but there were so many other photographers around and there were a lot of Olympus users around. <clears throat> so I had to stash the camera. Uh, it's just kind of one of those bummer things about having something pre-release is that you're not supposed to show it and, and I just couldn't. So I kind of had to not be able to shoot with it that day, but I have been out shooting with it since. And uh, today I'm actually taking you on on the journey with me. So this ought to be fun. I'll check in with you guys from Muskegon, Michigan. Again, like I said, about two hours from here. Uh, and hopefully we'll be shooting some snowy owls. So let's do this. All right, just got done photographing uh, an incredible bald eagle uh, sitting up in a tree outside of the area where we were photographing the snowy owls. And I have to say, the continuous autofocus tracking on this camera is insane. So I've kind of been totally, I've, actually I'll be honest, I've been impressed with the way the EM1 Mark II tracks. I think a lot of it comes down to just having to have a good technique to keep your subject maybe in like the center third of your frame, which I know isn't ideal. It just, it makes the, 
the ability to capture images put 100% more on the user and less on the gear when it's like that. But with this camera, uh, it followed subject completely almost out of frame. I think I had half the eagle in the frame because I wasn't panning fast enough and focus was still locked. Uh, I'm gonna pop up the sequence of photos here for you guys to check out. Uh, remember, lighting conditions here are kind of crap today. You can kind of see, you know, it's it's gray and gloomy. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't have any idea what ISO I was at. I know I'm in shutter priority and I have it set at 800th of a second, hoping that that's fast enough to freeze the wing movement. I think it is. Um, so once I get back home and start going through the images and putting this video together, then I'll have a better idea of what the ISO was and I'll probably pop that into like an overlay on the image when I share that here momentarily. So now it's off to the lake shore to shoot something a little less uh, wildlife and a little more nature. So I'll be tuning back in in a minute. See you guys. shoes all right so we're done shooting wildlife and here in Grand Haven you know my summer stomping grounds I guess I uh, here for hopefully a little bit of long exposure I'm gonna put the the live ND feature to the test out here as well as some of the um, the handheld high-res looking forward to that I'm actually shooting with where's he at there he is got Brian Essler from Photo Focus with me out here and he's got the camera as well so we're doing a little bit of hanging out together putting this camera through its paces I know I'm gonna be working on this video that you're watching now Brian I'm sure is putting together some articles as well for Photo Focus so by the time this video hits there's gonna be all kinds of content out there for you guys I'll check in here in a minute All right, good morning. It is uh, Saturday and it's about 6 a.m. and I'm headed out to Kensington Metro Park here in Michigan. Uh, there's a family of bald eagles out there, uh, two adults, a juvenile, uh, potentially two juveniles out there. And I'm gonna put the OMD EM1X uh, to work again out there photographing birds. Pretty exhausted. I stayed up rather late last night not sure if I wanted to do this today and uh, never turned my alarm off so it woke me up at quarter after five and here I am at the gas station grabbing supplies for the day uh, I'll check back in in a little bit hopefully from Kensington I forgot uh, the EM5 Mark II for video so I'm doing this with my Pixel 3 XL uh, so the video is going to be a little goofy from one camera to the next maybe you guys won't even notice but anyways I'll check in in about uh, close to 90 minutes about what it's going to take me to get there. So here I am at Kensington Metro Park. It is uh, about 27 degrees according to my car thermometer. A little chilly, uh, but it's so beautiful. It's going to be a gorgeous sunrise. Uh, that would be back to the east there. Uh, here at Kensington, there is a heron rookery out on this little island, and it also happens to be a place where eagles t uh, tend to take up residence and I'll show you that spot behind me. So back there, you can see the large nests in the trees. Uh, some of those are herons, and if there's a large one out there, I'm assuming is where the eagles have kind of just built their own nest amidst the rookery. So I'm just kind of set up here. Uh, of course, with the 
EM1 X EM1 X <laughs> and uh, 300 millimeter F4 Pro with the teleconverter attached uh, for maximum reach. Uh, my settings for today are going to be shutter priority, auto ISO, continuous autofocus tracking, and I've got the center nine points selected uh, just for quick target acquisition. And I am on sequential low right now. I'll probably crank it up to high once we get a little more light here. And it's just a waiting game now, folks. So, again, hopefully uh, we have some luck here. This camera's incredible. Uh, <laughs> It makes shooting like this so much easier. Uh, I was getting pretty good technique down with the EM1 Mark II. And with this, I think having developed that skill set already, this camera makes it just infinitely easier to, to get more keepers out of my shooting. So I'll check back in a little bit, hopefully with some back of the camera shots to show you guys. See you in a minute. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to photograph any eagles, but I do have this 40 frame sequence of a group of sandhill cranes flying past me, and you can see how well the focus tracks the subjects even as they fly in front of a complex background. It's pretty incredible. All right, so a lot has happened since that last uh, reporting there from Kensington Metro Park where I was showing you the cranes. I've been out shooting several times, doing quite a few different things. Just going to wrap this video up because here it is Monday the 21st, uh, three days until official press release time and I need to wrap this video up and I'm just kind of running out of time and actually this video has been going rather long to be honest with you. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of end this with how I feel about the camera about a month into using it, uh, just my general observations about it and uh and we'll just kind of wrap it up i think with some with some more photos of things i've captured since that uh last little bit of video segment there uh, shot at kensington metro park some of the things that i'm going to share are a concept shoot that i've been wanting to do for a long time involving the barn that i photograph all the time it's a a live composite shot using a drone and a loom cube uh, pretty cool stuff and i'm probably going to share some more birding photos of course and maybe a handheld high res shot or two or maybe something with the live nd i've still just got to go through and call through my images and unfortunately right now because there isn't really any kind of raw support for the camera i am using the olympus viewer 3 software which admittedly is not the best piece of software it's just not what i'm comfortable working with so what i find myself doing is is uh, pulling in I'm shooting raw plus JPEG that way I've at least got some images and then I've still got the raws I can come back to later when there's Lightroom support but what I'm doing right now in the interim is looking at all my JPEGs figuring out which images I want to edit pulling them into Olympus viewer 3 uh, converting them to TIFF and then 16-bit TIFF and then shooting them back out and importing them into Lightroom and it's just it's a long process it's not very fun uh, there is new software coming from Olympus they've completely revamped the uh, Olympus viewer software and I'm just racking my brain trying to remember what it's called I think it's called um, excuse me I think it's Olympus workspace or something along those lines I haven't tried it yet I'm supposed to be getting a link to that probably like in the next 24 hours so that I can install that and just kind of give my images a once through uh, but let's just kind of wrap this up and I'll just talk about what I think about the camera so uh, my initial impressions were oh my gosh this thing's a tank it's a monster uh, after having it for a month now I've just really kind of gotten to the point where uh, it just fits the hand better now uh, and my initial impressions were I just wasn't familiar with it because button layout has changed a bit you know the menu button is is over here now uh, whereas before it was right over here near your d-pad but you know having to make room for the uh, the joystick here the control knob I don't know whatever you want to call it a little nub I'm gonna call it a nub uh, which <laughs> this thing is great to have I'll just say that uh, just kind of really started to embrace how this camera fits what I like to do you know again I'm gonna reiterate this I think I said it probably in the very beginning segment of this I don't recall it was like a month ago but different strokes for different folks this definitely fits a need for certain people this is not the camera for every single person out there if you're a parent who just wants something quick and easy to shoot your kids with 
this probably isn't for you necessarily unless you know that if at some point you're going to get into just really high-end sports shooting or wildlife shooting or landscape or something where you just need the absolute pinnacle of what Olympus offers, then yeah, go for it. Get this. I mean, I'm not going to tell you don't get it because it has been an incredible, incredible camera to shoot with. But bearing that in mind, uh, this definitely fits the bill as a professional camera. It's funny. I was thinking about things to say about the size, the build quality, the presence, you know, how this thing looks in the hand, you know, when you show up to shoot with it. And I also kind of facetiously wanted to say for those people who feel like they need to have something big to impress everybody with, you know, this definitely fits the bill. You won't be the, the odd person out on the sidelines of a game uh, if you show up with this versus, say, the EM5 with no grip. Um, you know, you definitely fit the bill as a professional sports shooter uh, with this, especially with something like the, you know, the 40 to 150 with the, the lens hood out or the 300 mil, something along those lines. Um, but I've been having a great time with this. Again, I'll just say that the focus on this thing the focus tracking ability is just ridiculous i'm gonna i think pop in a sequence of shots of this juvenile bald eagle that get this and i'm probably going to get a ticket for this at some point but uh coming back from a trip to the west side of the state decided to take what i'd usually like to do the back roads to get home and come across the field and there were five bald eagles way way out in the field feeding on a carcass and, you know, I stopped the car, got out, put the hazards on, you know, and got to the edge of the road and shot out there. But I, this is the combo I had on. Um, 150 mil with the teleconverter, so 210 millimeters. Not really the longest lens. Um, I wasn't anticipating shooting something like this either. So I didn't quite have the reach. I was a little bummed out uh, shooting those eagles because it was just so far out. I mean, it could crop in, but that's really, they were really far out there. So a little bit bummed, I got back in the car and uh, and literally got a quarter of a mile down the road and another field on the other side of the road, uh, there was a juvenile bald eagle feeding on a deer carcass there as well. We have a lot of deer in Michigan that get hit by cars, folks. Um, so it's feeding on this deer carcass and it was so close to the side of the road. We're talking probably 30 yards, 40 yards off the road, maybe just a little bit more, 150 feet or so, somewhere around there. The problem was is that it was the sun was directly behind it so i'd be shooting straight into the sun uh very little time to think because there uh, for an old country road there was a decent amount of traffic and i was so afraid it was going to get spooked so it was on the right hand side of the car so i'd be looking out the passenger window i didn't want to uh try to shoot through the passenger window as i was rolling by i needed to think quick so what i did is found the nearest road to do a U-turn on and I quick set my settings. I tried to overexpose a bit so that I could maybe bring out some shadow detail knowing that I'd probably blow out the background in doing so. I uh, had my camera set up from shooting the other eagle so it's continuous autofocus tracking. My nine center focus points which seems to be like the sweet spot for tracking objects in motion on this camera. Spun a U-turn around, started driving down the road, never stopped the car and I know I'm going to get hate for this. <laughs> drove with my knee guiding my car slow I mean you know 10 miles an hour or something like that never stopped the car uh, and just coasted by pulled the camera up there are no oncoming cars if worst case scenario I'd be off the side of the road but um, had my window down and just as I'm rolling by I'm machine gunning this juvenile bald eagle and as soon as he sees me approaching and the lens comes out of the the door of the car um, kicked him up spooked him her whatever it was and it took off and I got a series of pretty cool shots I'm pretty pumped with them the bird was completely in silhouette um, so a great contrast so I guess easier to track I suppose for any camera but regardless uh, the camera tracked it flawless from a moving vehicle while the bird was flying as well uh, I don't know if that's a complex thing for any camera system to handle but I'll tell you what I was pretty floored at how well this camera did it uh, and then another thing to talk about about that, because I will share some, some frames out of that sequence. Uh, again, the bird was completely silhouetted, even by overexposing, because I'm not joking, I was shooting pretty much straight into the sun. I was still able to bring out so much detail out of the shadow cleanly. Uh, I'm amazed at the difference in the uh, amount of detail I can preserve or pull out from the shadows without it just completely destroying the image, um, without the 
without a lot of pixelation, with a lot of graininess, without a lot of noise. Uh, so much more leeway to work with. So I officially, I don't know what the specs are as far as the stop difference between the two, but I'm gonna just jump out there and say that this is darn near close to a stop of a uh, more dynamic range from what I was able to pull out of this without, you know, getting scientific and doing side by side, you know, shots when in, in the same conditions to to test it, but cuz it's not what I do, I just like to go shoot rather than talk numbers. Um so yeah, again, tracking, a track from a moving car, a moving object. Pretty stoked with that. Uh handheld high res images. 100% game changing feature at this point. Uh, as a landscape photographer, I will honestly tell you, I have found myself almost always on handheld high res. It's just ludicrous to uh, to have that megapixel count if I want it. Um, I don't have to do it all the time, but I just find myself doing it because I don't have to worry about like complete stationary. I mean, the stabilization in the camera just makes this possible. Astounding. Um, let me pull up. I've got a spreadsheet here from Olympus full of the specs and uh, da, 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 da. so stabilization we'll talk about that just really quick again I'm not like a spec guy so I don't this it's not what I like doing but I'll do it anyways because I know some people are gonna want to hear these things uh, stabilization uh, 7 EV based on SIPA standards with the 12 to 40 that's kind of like you know everybody's kind of de facto you know pro lens that they go to my de facto is the 12 to 100 uh, and with the image stabilization in that, working in conjunction with the stabilization in this camera, now we come up to seven and a half stops of compensation. Bonkers. I haven't tested to see just how far I can push an exposure, like exposure time, but I'm going to say I know probably I can confidently shoot two second shots all day long without any kind of problem at all, without even thinking about it with this setup. I could probably push the four or five second if I really kind of lean up against something. So. It's just bonkers. Uh, going back to the uh, the handheld high res. I know I've got something here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, it utilizes the electronic shutter, obviously, and that's what it did previous version of the high res. Um, so this says up to one eight thousandth of a second, which that makes it really easy if your shutter speeds that fast. It just kind of cranks through the whole handheld, the whole high res uh, process, just super fast. Um, but down to one sixtieth of a second. That's pretty slow. I'll tell you what, on a DSLR, a lot of people have trouble getting a decent regular shot handheld at a 60th of a second. Uh, but this I'm pulling off the handheld high res shots. You know, it's a 50 megapixel shot. It's just, it's astounding to be able to do this. I, I don't even know what else to say. Uh, like I said, you're gonna probably, if you follow me online and end up over on my Flickr page, by the time this lands, I'm gonna start throwing videos up on, or uh, photos up on Flickr. Um, you'll see that the megapixel count or the dimensions of my images are probably gonna increase dramatically moving forward because I'll be shooting with this probably all the time just because I can do this. Um, I don't see anything on here in this spec sheet that tells me that the dynamic range increases with the uh, with the handheld high res, but my, uh, my results seem to bear that. So, Another reason as a landscape photographer for me to be shooting the handheld high res just is the fact that I get what I'm seeing is more dynamic range. The ability for me to push a, uh, an image further because those of you who follow my work or, or know what I do, uh, rarely is anything straight out of camera with me. So having that extra leeway is just a great, great thing. Um, another thing, so the Live ND, uh, you've probably heard talk about that on the rumor sites. I don't know where they're getting all this stuff from, but uh, so I'm sure it's leaked. The Live ND filter. So what's really cool is that I use filters. I'm uh, a Nisi brand ambassador, so of course I'm going to promote filter use. But having this ND function built into the camera just allows me to push the addition of adding filters to it, my exposure is even longer. Super cool thing. Just a quick note so that for those of you that do order this camera and get it and do what I did, which is kind of I shoot an aperture priority a lot. Um, so now it's an aperture priority. I was trying to figure out why I couldn't use Live ND. This mode is available in manual and shutter priorities only. So keep that in mind. Try to put a little mental note there if you're ordering this and you want to play with the Live ND function. Uh, just keep that in mind as well. Um, there are two uh, high-res mode shots, kind of going backwards to the high-res talk again. There's the handheld mode, which I've been using 
pretty much exclusively. And then there's also the tripod based mode, which actually helps to uh, mitigate some of the artifacting that you'll experience if you're doing a landscape photo and there are leaves kind of waving in the wind a little bit in the background, it helps reduce that. I have not tried that yet. That's something that, again, I suggest maybe following me on uh, Flickr and you'll see some images pop up there and I'll note if I was using the, the high res mode and if it was tripod mode so that you can kind of zoom in and uh, and take a peek at the leaves in the, in the background there. When we get leaves, good grief, it's like uh, January here in Michigan and today it was uh, the air temperature when I started into work was 15 below, the air temperature. It's just, it's insane. Uh, quick note about movie shooting. I'm not a movie guy. I'm kind of making one here, but that's really not my wheelhouse. So if you want to know like all these crazy specs about, you know, bit rates and all that stuff, I'm going to defer you to Austin Latimer uh, in the Visionary program. He actually produces films, you know, documentary films, short films, independent films. This That's his wheelhouse, not mine. I'm kind of talking uh, notes that I've actually highlighted on this spreadsheet, things that are kind of important to me. Um, and one of those is high speed movie mode is what they call it. It's 120 frame per second at full 1080p HD. So I'm going to be using that a lot. Uh, everybody likes a little dramatic slow-mo in their videos. Uh, another talking point, super, super, super huge is the, the my menu function. So what the my menu function does is allows you to take 35 items from all these menus in your camera. You can put them into these my menu functions. So you've got five, we'll call them tabs or sections. And in each one of those sections, you could put up to seven items. So for a total of 35 items that are all in a custom menu. So I can't believe I'm gonna do this because it's gonna look so cheesy for me to even do this. But if I bring up the menu and let me get over here, at the bottom of the menu screen, there's a little star down there and that star are your menus. So you've got quick access to features that you want to use or use the most. So for me, those are things like uh, high res mode, um, multiple exposure, formatting the card. I haven't even hardly gone through and set those up yet. I'm really just trying to wrap my head around what all I should put in those menus. But it's a super cool feature to have uh, on, these ca on the camera now and I'm totally loving it. I know it's not anything groundbreaking you know uh, I know people who shoot Nikon have had access to like a custom you know menu function like that before and I'm just stoked that we're at, we have access to that now it definitely helps a lot um, and I don't know why I noted this I think everybody knows this so but it's got the dual troop uh, true pick 8 processor in it so literally this thing is like a little supercomputer and a camera and it's pretty bonkers and I no EVF blackout. So when I'm shooting all these birds, I'm doing these panning shots of the cranes flying by or uh, eagles flying by. Normally you get a little bit of a blackout in your shutter. I'm not seeing blackout, which is, it's crazy. I'm not used to that. So I'm used to kind of mentally, you know, gearing myself up for knowing where my subject is as the, as you get these little blank outs uh, in your in your EVF, but I'm not experiencing that at all, which is which is pretty rad. So it's as close to a DSLR, I think, as you're gonna get now at this point uh, with an EVF. Uh, EVF is bigger, brighter, sharper. I don't know, I, I'm, I haven't gone through all the specs, but um, I'm sure somewhere in here, I could probably dig it up. Uh, I'm actually just gonna do a search right here. <laughs> Uh, EVF, let's see, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see, field of view, 100%, uh, 1.48, hold on here, let's see, da, 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 da. oh my gosh, there are so many specs, holy cow, this is ridiculous, I'm sorry, I apologize, I probably should have had a script, I know Joe Edelman doing his video, he's got a script, the dude is a professional, uh, I'm just some hack, <laughs> sitting in his little camera nook here, just kind of winging it. Uh, 2.36 million dots. I don't remember what it is on the EM1 Mark II. It just feels like a better EVF to me. Again, I'm more of a like, how does it feel person than a hard numbers and specs guy. So if you know me, follow me, like what I do, uh, kind of trust my enthusiasm, then if I tell you it's an improved EVF, trust me, it's an improved EVF. Uh, you can find specs all day long on the internet. So, I mean, if you want the numbers, go check those out. Uh, I'm just gonna wrap this up, you guys. This video has already been just ridiculously long. I apologize for the length of it, but 
I wanted to build out a video that covered my first month with this camera and it has been an amazing month it really has I got the camera just before Christmas and here we are uh, the just before the 24th so it's been literally about a month now and uh, man it's been great I'll tell you what if you are an EM1 Mark II shooter with aspirations of pushing your photography even further this is an investment and I hate saying investment when I'm talking about camera gear because I don't think you should invest in it you should buy it and use it it's a tool and enjoy it but I'll use the word investment because everybody's saying it invest in this camera and you'll be investing in yourself you'll be investing in your art it's definitely I hear so many people and I used to say the same thing all the time it's not the camera it's the photographer holding the camera 100% agree I am NOT gonna argue with that but there comes a time where you're presented with different tools that open possibilities to do more things this camera does that I am able to achieve better bird and flight tracking shots hands down I could probably give this camera to someone who doesn't shoot wildlife and explain to them there's gonna be a bird flying you know this is what you need to do to shoot it and they could probably just hands down just do the shot and not have a problem um, handheld high-res again opens up more possibilities for me uh, I hate telephone poles in my photos look at my landscape photos nary a telephone pole in any of my shots uh, having the handheld high-res shot available allows me to get in tighter to do more fine detailed work in removing things like telephone poles from my shots so uh, I've babbled on long enough I'm just gonna share a few photos there are a million videos probably today that you could be watching go watch them and uh, and come to your own conclusions on what this camera can do for you I tell you what you're not gonna be disappointed with its performance you guys take care thank you so much for following along and uh, in the comments below if you've got work out there share it I want to see I want to see everybody who's watching my videos what they shoot uh, hey I'm gonna go <laughs> got some video editing to do I'm gonna throw a few photos on here you guys take care again thanks for subscribing see ya